And I, th I think it's but what you once you've got that audience, linking back to where we came into the conversation, you've got to make sure you're talking about their problem. They, they want to talk, you know, how are you going to solve their problem? They don't want to know, know what your sexy new widget is. When I'm inviting and talking to people early in their journey from a consulting point of view, even just looking at their investor decks, everyone wants to say they've got AI now or they're using blockchain. And my question to all of them is, do I want blockchain? Yeah. Why is that clever? Yeah. Haven't you just added complications, cost processing issues with my clients are going to talk about the green impact, et cetera. Yeah. If there's a really good reason, tell me the problem you're solving. The fact that it actually happens to be solved by blockchain is probably on page four. Yeah. Tripping into these buzzwords and talking about you. And again, just like you, you were humbling enough to say, yeah, I, I, rec I know this. I've made the mistake. We've been there. And I still make the mistake. It's very easy to fall back into the trap when you get excited about something. But you've got to make sure you're talking to them about, here's the problem you've got or the opportunity you could have. Yeah. Ideally, I'm the first person to tell you, because as we've already said, I just spent chance I now get the order. But then how am I going to actually solve that for you is what really makes all of the difference. I think the best explanation I heard that, that kind of you need to ruminate on it a little bit. It's not something that, that when you hear it, it's really powerful. But then, then there's a moment of, so how do I do that? Is if I was selling a swimming pool to someone, I'm not actually selling the swimming pool. What I'm selling is them having a relaxing afternoon on a Friday after they finish work, swimming in their pool in their garden. And the feelings that go with that, they don't care about whether there's a swimming pool or not. What they care about is that afternoon of relaxation that's what they're passionate about because that's where the emotion comes in and so if you're a business owner regardless of what you sell regardless of whether it's services or products you need to capitalize on feelings and the relief like i always say to people think about what they must mourn to their partner about over the dinner table when the kids are in bed what are the things that keep them up at night or to your point earlier on what are the things that that indicate there's something that, that's a problem but they don't know even what the problem is. They just know what's causing a problem for them. I mean, it, it, it might be that they're three steps away and you need to take them on that journey to say, do you know what? You probably feel this. And that's because of this. And that is an indicator of this problem yeah. here, which we solve. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's also being relatable, isn't it? You're not gonna, you're not gonna go and market to a, a street of ex council houses trying to sell them swivel liquid swimming pools. Yeah, so it can be a swimming pool example. A real simple example, technical service company, a really good company that's been a supplier to me in the past. I can recommend without question, but was looking at their go to market strategy and their target customers are SMEs. But they've also been fortunate enough, they've done projects with big organizations like the NHS in the past, right? So they put those logos on their web page and say, hey, we've worked with the NHS, we've worked with us, or whatever it might be. If you're trying to sell to an SME, you've just made it unrelatable. Right? Yeah. We made the mistake, again, we learned from mistake. When we, our first client on the global scale as supply pilot, used to be called S4RB, was Walmart. And we were very proud, as we should have been, that we basically landed Walmart as a client. But we shouted about it to the point that actually lunch, even other big global retailers were going, cool, we can't afford it. Walmart are buying, we can't afford it. We're going, no, no. Yeah. You see, we completely missed the point. You've got to be relatable. And this is where knowing who you want to talk to um, is a challenge. I mentioned in a flash just there, we used to be called S4RB. But so we, the business I got involved in doing this supply chain software 10 years ago was called S4RB, Solutions Retail Brands. Um, we rebranded around the time of COVID to focus more around sustainability for a number of reasons. One is we all really want to make an impact on sustainability. Retail wasn't listening to us because they were too busy about supply chain issues of COVID. But we'd spent years building an audience in retail where actually, so what we do is just as relevant to CPG brands like an SC Johnson or wherever it might go, or, um, and actually redefining that and re-messaging was a real challenge. It's one of the, one of the things I'm most proud of, of what we've achieved because we did it well and obviously we've done it well enough that we went on to sell the business. So obviously it was, let's call that success. But it's really interesting when you just look back and go, it's not just what you say, it's all those subliminal messages. Like I say, of sticking these big logos on your thing of who do I want to talk to? 
So it comes back to that same learning of really going, what's my process and who do I want to sell to? And it's much more valuable to spend my time having four really good conversations this month where I'm going to go and sell two of those guys than having 400 poor, poor conversations that are diluting all of the effort in those early stage businesses. So coming back to the same point.